So. Okay. Hello, I'm Michelle Davis of the Center for Manufacturing Research at Tennessee Tech University in Cookville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Spring 2020 Golden Eagle Additively Innovative Virtual Lecture Series. This is the ninth semester we have produced this popular and informative series. The series is hosted by TTU Center for Manufacturing Research and the iMakerspace at TTU. Additive manufacturing is a focus of both entities, and as such, this short virtual lecture series has been planned to highlight the best practices, potential problems, technological advancements, innovations, and scientific contributions to additive manufacturing with expert talks from various institutions, industries, R&D centers, and laboratories. Today, we are honored to hear from Foucault Passi, Research Team Leader, Advanced Manufacturing Technologies at the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. His talk is titled, New Functionalities for Metal AM by Embedded Intelligence. The speaker will provide his contact information for questions after the presentation is over. Thank you, and I turn the presentation over to Pucko. Okay, thank you very much. So, so good morning, everybody. As, as told, uh, my name is Pasi Puukka, and I work at, as a research team leader at the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. So, in this slide, you can see my, my picture as well as the uh, 3D map of Finland where we are located. Uh, before I'm going to the actual uh, topic, I just will say a couple of words about the VTT. So the, organization where I work. So, so our team is Advanced Manufacturing Technologies. Uh, in practice, we focus pretty much on additive metal printing, so core activity. Here is just a couple of um, bullet points about the VTT team. So we are um, um, kind of our purpose so to say, is, is the um, great impact through the scientific and technological excellence and, and, uh, and uh, let's say, value for our customers. There are some, let's say, uh, values related to us listed. So for instance, our turnover is a euros per, per year and the, uh, we, we have around 2,000 people working here at the VTT. Um, our, um, let's say, research is, is mainly applied research, so we could say it's a, somewhere between uh, basic research done mainly by universities and then, then development done by industry. However, we have really close cooperation with the industry as well as with universities and uh, this kind of area where we uh, work the best, of course, on, on topic that uh, is in, in case. Uh, then a um, couple of words about our, our general activities in the field of additive manufacturing. So in the left hand side you can see the uh, let's say our experimental facilities. So, so what is actually quite unique here is that at the VTT we cover let's say whole uh, process say chain from powder to product or even uh, we could say from the design to uh, performance of the component. So we have a gas atomization unit in-house. We have various uh, systems to modify powders, uh, measure them, characterize them, then we can print these powders. We can add different sort of features by direct rate direct dry technologies, we can do heating, heat treatment, and then finally testing of the component. And based on that, we, uh, let's say, kind of focus on, on three different areas. So at the bottom, there is a material services, services for kind of basic developing um, powders for metal AM. And this could vary for, let's say, analyzing powder printability to develop them as kind of specific application to the materials. For instance, we've been working quite a lot with a 
uh, magnetic materials, both soft and, and permanent magnet materials, and, and be developing them for additive manufacturing. We are also uh, actively working with the um, modeling and uh, developing kind of computational approach for material development. Then production services, we focus on, for instance, a kind of post-processing, how the heat treatments for the components need to be done. How to integrate the parts of, of additive manufacturing, and, and uh, which is increasingly important is, is the quality control, quality assurance of additive manufacturing as we are going towards industrialization of additive manufacturing. And then at the top, there is a kind of application services. So their very vital uh, competence is, of course, design for AM. Um, that's area that we will be working on doing some some topological optimizations, for instance. We've been also doing some, some research in the field of digital spare parts. And then at the right-hand side, added into intelligence and functionality, and that's now the topic of, of my presentation here. So um, if we start by kind of defining what, what, what we mean when we talk about the embedded intelligence, this is took uh, directly from Wikipedia. So um, kind of long, version is, is that uh, embedded intelligence is characterized as the ability of product, process, or service to reflect on uh, its own operational performance, usage load, or environment to enhance the, uh, the product performance and lifetime to increase quality or to ensure customer satisfaction. However, in our context, we, we I talk about it now especially a product which is capable to, to reflect its own performance or or environment and, and this way kind of enhance the, the performance of, of that product and typically this is done by embedding different sensors in that compo component um, let's say um, our vision is described in this, this um, slide so um, if you start from the left hand side there is a um, um, valve body Hydraulic valve body, um, which we have then optimized for additive manufacturing. So, so using topological optimization, and this caused al already some, let's say, um, benefits for the component. So, improved or optimized fluid channels, uh, improved efficiency. However, the key uh, thing in this slide is that if you are able to add some intelligence on on that component, then then we can achieve something which is plus one, or let's say one plus one is, is three. So that uh, that is really our vision to combine these two areas and achieve something that cannot be achieved, let's say, just by utilizing additive manufacturing or just by utilizing kind of uh, instrumentation of the components. Um, there are different sort of approaches Yeah, this sort of 3D printed intelligence. At the top, there is what I call here as an embedded approach. So, and, and let's say my um, talk will mainly focus on this sort of approach. So, so it would mean that uh, design is done for this a additively manufactured component, but then actual manufacturing is done in, in two stages. So, we first print, uh, first stage of the printing, then we do the assembly of electronics and continue the printing to finalize it and then do the necessary post-processing. And that's, let's say, kind of typical approach when we are talking about 3D printed intelligence. However, there are other options as well. Uh, next one is called kind of easy instrumentation. So in, in that approach, in, uh, already in design phase, we kind of design uh, how the instruments, instrumentation can be done more easily. So, so we can, for instance, this some which makes them easier to, to uh, assemble, assemble the electronics on that component. And, and uh, we could, might use also some additive manufacturing technology like direct energy deposition to, to kind of seal the component and close the electronics inside that component. And then a last one is, is what I call here integrated printed sensors. So uh, this goes already quite 
conventional instrumentation of the component. However, the, the difference here is that the, the sensors are printed, so so that that also creates some some advantage. advantage. Um, well, then the key question is 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 to why to why to do this? Uh, we, we, what are the benefits of, of kind of this sort of 3D printed intelligence? So uh, I I think one of the key benefit is is capability to uh, do more accurate in situ measurements. So typically using this approach, sensor can be located closer to phenomena. So so for instance, if you take a kind of temperature measurement and thermocouple with embedding that thermocouple inside the component so that the, let's say the tip of thermocouple is at the surface and, and or very close proximity of the surface, we can get really accurate create uh, measurements and as well as we can locate the sensor exactly in the spot where, where we would, would uh, like to do the measurement. So that's clearly one benefit. Then uh, next one is, is kind of instrumentation of components which have very complex geometries and as, as you know uh, additively manufactured components typically have quite uh, uh, complex geometries goes basically in hand hand in hand. Uh, third um, benefit is is very valuable valuable in certain uh, applications. So so the while while this a uh, um, sensing solution is is embedded inside the component, it's really well shielded against against harsh environment. And if this component is used, for instance, in high temperature, let's take an example of of, of the kind of um, turbine blade and an instrumentation of that. The, the environment is really rough and harsh, so uh, this approach could give benefit there. The, there are different examples, humidity, high pressure, acidity, these sort of things. And then as a final um, potential uh, benefit is kind of easy retrofitting to the flexibility of, of, of 3D printing. Um, then, of course, we need also kind of sensing the communication solution, but uh, it's really difficult to say anything uh, specific about this because it really depends on application and kind of need rising from this application. So uh, we can uh, basically uh, embed different sensors, MEM sensors, accelerometers, acoustic emission sensors, flow sensors, for instance, we can also embed printed sensors like uh, thermocouples. Then communication could be based on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, near field, communi near field communication or, or something else. And, and one of the key questions is of course energy source. So uh, it can be uh, chargeable or normal battery or even based on some sort of energy harvesting uh, solution. However, this is really something that should be considered by application. So, so it depends pretty much on, on that. Um, going back a bit to VTT, I will then uh, I will explain you and one uh, um, a couple of examples that we have done in this field. But uh, one reason why we are working in this field is that we are actually having quite unique combination of competencies in this field. So, so we have direct drive facilities which we can use to print sensors. We have metal AM facilities competencies is to use the technology MEM sensors and, and also communication systems. And we have also competencies related to condition-based maintenance, which is actually one of the, let's say, uh, clearly area which where this technology can be utilized. So um, um, here is an uh, example of the uh, case study that we did uh, uh, in this field. Though. So we call this a smart so um, this was a successful proof of concept of, of kind of 3D printed smart shaft which has an acceler acceleration sensor embedded inside this structure. So this was done uh, by um, uh, stopping the printing and then uh, um, assembling the, the sensors and, and then continuing printing and we also did some post-processing for the component. Um, so this sensor and wiring is embedded in 
inside this component. Uh, we also uh, built a wireless communication from the component to cloud using uh, Bluetooth low energy. And this was then uh, tested kind of in a condition-based monitor, monitoring application. Uh, so, so the validation was done using a bearing test trick uh, um, with a uh, needle bearing in you know, all about lubrication. Testing was uh, basically very simple the external loading uh, with just a couple of different frequencies and, and the test was carried out, out in room temperature. And the, um, uh, the, the reason that this very simple testing was that we, we just wanted to demonstrate the applicability of this approach and make a proof of concept. Um, and, and in that project, we didn't have a really then resources to deep dive in the results of, of, that, uh, of that study. So and, and one clear benefit was that they, uh, that Rick um, has already an accelerometer sensor, uh, so we we could then compare the, the results coming that from the embedded sensor and the kind of uh, data coming from from that uh, rig itself. So here is just an example of the results. So at the uh, top there is a this uh, embedded sensor, and then uh, the uh, at the bottom, there is a reference sensor. This is shown as a frequency domain. And, and without going to, uh, let's say, details of this, of this study, uh, the, the main finding is really that this sort of um, approach could, could give actually quite nice information about different phenomena happening in these sort of uh, 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 components. Uh, um, I mentioned quickly that we have also this sort of direct right thermal spray technology, which is actually quite nice uh, addition to this, uh, let's say, uh, bit of uh, embedded intelligence. So this is a, basically a plasma-based thermal spraying unit, um, which, which kind of enable additive manufacturing of multi-material patterns in, in 3D without using any kind of pre-masking. Um, with this technology, it's possible to, to uh, create conductors, but also some uh, sensors, typically quite simple sensors like thermocouples, antennas, these sort of things. And uh, also, it has quite high freedom when it comes to substrate materials, materials, so it can be used for metals, polymers, ceramics, composites, and so on. So uh, we have used this, this technology to, to um, make these thermocouples. Here's an example of kind of K-type uh, thermocouple, which is quite commonly used thermocouple. Um, basically, there is a two materials used for these legs, legs so chromel and alumel, and the, the differences between these uh, materials gives the kind of uh, functionality for, or creates the functionality for this a thermocouple. With this technology, it's possible so uh, very deep of the uh, of the lines and also thickness of the lines uh, by, for instance, varying this a uh, active um, mask, digital mask. So here is another example of of uh, let's say smart parts uh, done at the VTT. So at the left left hand side you can see actually the same uh, year which was in the previous slide, but now there. Is a uh, printed thermocouple inside of the gear is that the, the tip is really at the between the teeth of this gear. So in, in a kind of in location where we need to measure the uh, temperature. Then at the right hand side there is a other example with the accelerometer uh, embedded inside. So this is a just a simple ball, but just given a, you an impression that the, the end Embedded component doesn't need to be a huge, so it is possible to also embed uh, el electronics inside the smaller components. Then uh, a couple, uh, couple of uh, examples, kind of public examples elsewhere done elsewhere. Uh, this first one um, is uh, done by a direct energy deposition technology. So basically, uh, there's are bars where there is a uh, screen printed. 
tensor uh, embedded inside that uh, component. So basically there is a cavity and then this sensor is embedded inside and, and then sealed afterwards. And, and uh, this is also working demonstration, which was actually nice. It was able to, to measure temperatures also during the cladding. Uh, then other one, other example, this is actually a very nice example. So this is uh, called smart screw. So, so basically it's able to monitor compression and bending. But what is really nice in this uh, application is that uh, there is no electronics, although it, this is based on capacitance shift, but the, the, the kind of uh, functionality is, is done by design. So, so it's a mechanical system. So there is this sort of spiral uh, inductor inside of this uh, component, which then uh, creates the functionality for this component. Nice example of this sort of functionality. Um, other quite similar example, but this one is then done on, on a polymer side. So the uh, uh, also um, and, and ba basically embedded a strain gauge uh, integrated in that structure. As a matter of fact, there is much more examples from the polymer side than from the metal side. As, as you can guess, um, uh, the, there, um, there are more challenges with the, uh, with the uh, metal printing as, as we are talking about uh, melted metal and electronics. That's a combination that, that typically cause some challenges. Uh, then a couple of more examples from the polymer side. So at the uh, right hand side there is a uh, kind of 3D printed uh, antenna structure. Um, then a magnetic flux sensor uh, embedded in that, uh, embedded inside this sort of uh, um, um, polymer uh, structure. And, and then at the left hand side actually there is a lot of different functionalities embedded to this component. Um, so I think it's a pretty much time to conclude my presentation. So, so the, uh, we think that this sort of uh, 3D printed embedded intelligence can offer quite a nice alternative to increase the smartness of the component. Of course, it doesn't fit to every purpose and there are also many challenges to be solved. But a, um, I'm pretty sure that we, in, in the future we will see a lot of uh, applications where this approach is, is utilized. And uh, we can see various applications where, where this approach would create benefits, for instance, condition-based maintenance. Also kind of creating uh, various uh, components and uh, like an engines, these sort of things, tracking digital ID and so on. And also in, in a different industrial sector, sectors like an, uh, aviation, space, um, tooling, energy sector, and, and let's say many, many others. Um, I would be happy to, to uh, answer later on if you have any, any questions or if you would like to continue discussion. So at the, there is my uh, uh, email address as well, my uh, phone number. I added there also, let's say, my colleague, Thomas Pinoma, our customer account lead, so, so you can contact him as well if you have any, any questions. So with that, I would like to thank you and, and uh, wish you a good day. Thank you so much. It's a great talk.